You have about 200 of those that are still remaining in our inventory. Keep in mind that this is the first opportunity that we have had the chance uh, to introduce Bob Rector to you. And Bob does a little bit different type of artistic work with the, uh, the automobiles. He has a background. He started doing uh, really industrial work for the large automotive uh, manufacturers like Chrysler. And he lived over in Europe for a while and worked with some of the big race teams. Now he's living down in North Carolina working almost exclusively with Winston Cup. Also still available, this is an incredible idea. Really. I picked up one last time we had it on the air. It's the 1994 Action Pack card set with the uncut card sheet. Now, here's the story on this. Action Pack doesn't make complete sets for anybody. You can't buy them anywhere as a complete set except for here at QVC. Now, over and beyond that, we include two prototype cards of Kyle Petty and uh, the Mellow Yellow Automobile. Also, we have an uncut card sheet with 48 cards, which is called Challengers and Champions. That's Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt together. Jeff, we're back live. We've got racing caps and I made a big mistake man let me tell you what when Daryl Waltrip was with us DW I called him baseball caps <laughs> and he beat me up unmercifully <laughs> for about an hour where well, we've got racing caps are available let me grab yours over here and I'll run through the laundry list of all the different teams that are available we've got the Jeff Gordon hat the way that they're designed we call these the nameplate hats now these are new for 1994 their price is seventeen dollars and seventy five cents the item number is a two zero four three six it starts off with the nameplate on the side you have the number and then you're also going to find that it's done with a series of different colors for the vent holes and for the cap and it really does make a nice looking addition those to a sharp, collection those are really sharp hats uh you know they every once in a while i have some hats made up just you know for me i mm -hmm. i don't really always like my name on, on on my on my hats that i wear personally but uh you know i went to the the guys motorsports traditions that yep. do these hats i said listen when i get my hats made up i said i want i want this this hat right here i mean these are the quality is unbelievable plus you know just i mean they're soft you know you, you don't find hats yeah, that are made out of this plus the like you said as comfortable as those so those are great great items and we have some other drivers available as well mark martin kyle petty daryl waltrip we also have dale jarrett available we also have one from the smoke and joe race team which is featuring that that uh, smoke and joe character on the front and i got to ask you a question jeff i mean your schedule is very busy and when you're at the track i mean it's it's work it's what you do for a living but do you notice the things out there that have the jeff gordon name on it and the things that the fans carry around with them and wear on their backs oh yeah you know i mean we're lying if we say we don't we don't notice those things uh, uh -huh. but uh yeah you know every once in a while you'll be you'll be looking up in the grandstands uh, during driver introduction or or something like i mean every once in a while i, I find myself uh, if I'm if I'm by myself, I don't have any guys around me, and uh, uh, just taking you know riding along, waiting for a for a pit stop or something. Yeah, heck, I'll look up in the grandstand and see what the fans are doing. You know, you never know what those people are doing. Sometimes they're getting pretty crazy while they're <laughs> there, and uh, you know it makes it fun for me. But you can't mm -hmm. always see what T-shirts or hats they're wearing uh, when you're you're doing 160 or 170. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of the drivers, uh, you know, we we look around to see what's selling, uh, see who's hot. Well, this, this is a tough question to, to answer, I'm sure, but, I mean, as a young man racing in midgets and started off, I would assume, in go-kart racing, right? Right. Um, hoping someday to be a big name, but did you ever think it would come this quickly into the depth of popularity that you've amassed already? Not at all. Uh, you know, I, really, when I was racing quarter midgets and go-karts, I think I said, hey, I want to drive in the Daytona 500 or the Indy mm -hmm. 500 because that's, you know, like what everybody else was saying. Now, I, I really didn't know a whole lot about it, lot, didn't know a lot about the drivers. And, and to me, uh, sprint car race, I mean, Steve Kinzer, yep. Doug Wolfgang, these guys, those were my heroes when I was younger because I went to those races. I went to the, to the World of Outlaw and the dirt race, the USAC races, things like that. And so that's where, you know, I want my next step to be. But I never thought, you know, that I'd be in a, in a sprint car, especially at age 13 or 14 years old. And, and so, you know, Winston Cup and, and Daytona and all the things that have happened, that was so far out there that, that mm -hmm. it, it was not even a dream at, at that point. And, and really, I mean, until recently, I, I still have to pinch myself every once in a while and say, hey, is it really happening? Am I really this far along it's unbelievable well there's a lot of guys especially we'll go back to the last year at daytona rookie leads the first lap of the daytona 500 <laughs> so you got everybody else in the rear view mirror at that point it's got to be a real uh smack in the face with reality i mean you're there you're at daytona that was that was uh an exciting point too i mean i i come on the rest and say yes you know, <laughs> I mean, even though it was only one lap and, and uh, it wasn't the most important one but just to be able to say you know any lap but especially the first one oh, when yeah. you're a rookie you know to say you've led that 
that lap uh, at Daytona mm -hmm. is, is is pretty definitely, special. Definitely a sign. I of mean, you got to realize, you got to kind of put yourself in, in my position. Be be 21, 22 years old, driving that race car, and 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 to be at Daytona and lead a lap. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, we've got some other things available. The racing caps are still available to you. Seventeen dollars and seventy-five cents. The item number is a two zero four three six. Let's keep you informed of some of the other things if you are indeed just tuning in. We've talked a little bit about the Brickyard 400. We'll talk more about it by the end of the program, I promise. And by the way, for those of you who happen to be IndyCar fans, uh, we got a bombshell to drop on you here in the next few weeks. We've got some big, big things in store for those of you who are Indy fans involving the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I can't tell you about it now, but I will in a little bit. But for the Brickyard 400 here, the inaugural hat and t-shirt set, very popular at $31. A20671. If you don't have tickets for the race, I urge you to pick these up just for a little piece of memorabilia history. This is going to be a big, big day in Indy. Also still available, the new 1994 Jeff Gordon flag. It's a little bigger than the standard size of most flags, three and a half feet by two and a half feet, $29.25. The item number is F4655. I get a lot of cars and a lot of letters on an ongoing basis, Jeff, from people who are saying, we collect die casts. And I get pictures from people who have an entire room <laughs> of their home filled with die casts. Well, we wanted to offer something with your likeness that's just a little bit off the norm, a right. little bit different. So what we're making available to you is your choice of either a great big huge Chevy Suburban, which is used as a bank, also as a die cast collectible. And we also have an airplane. That one dates back to a 1929 Model R type. And that one's also working as a bank. The color scheme that that Rick and, and Ray and you and all the rest of the folks, Sam Bass had a hand in that, I believe, right, too, in the right, design Sam of the Bass. car. I mean, it gives an opportunity to be an, an ultimate showcase for what the people at DuPont do. You can do anything with these colors. I mean, anything and everything. Uh, yep. Yeah, they, they did a, a fantastic job. Actually, uh, these colors originally, uh, I mean, there were so many things. You got, you, got you got to realize some of the ideas. Okay, here's a paint company coming into racing. What uh -huh. are we going to do? And we had splash paint designs. We had this, we had that. And to come out with a rainbow of colors, fluorescent colors, as bright as they are. Uh, and originally, the blue was black, if I remember right, and then that went to blue, and I mean, that just like, boom, that yeah, was really it. Yeah, really pops you know? the eyes. And uh, it, it's really gone off well, very well. DuPont's very happy with it. Well, there, I had a little confusion. In fact, uh, we've got some, some representatives from DuPont here in the studio tonight, and I had to ask a question, because, I mean, I'm as big a race fan as I think I could possibly be, but on the automobile, it's listed as DuPont finishes right automotive but it is finishes. actually dupont the name of the team is dupont automotive re or refinish team racing, team yeah right. so it gets a little confusing but <laughs> but what they do basically is it's aftermarket products to make your car look really good right you know it, it's it's really something because most sponsors in nascar right now are 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 really um in relation with the customers or, mm -hmm. or or the people that are sitting in in the grandstands where you know, DuPont refinishes is to body shops and, right. and, and to, uh, you know, a lot of people that, that are painting the cars that the people really don't always know exactly what kind of paint's going on in their car, but I can guarantee you most of the time it's DuPont painting. And, and so, you know, they're not as, as customer uh, related as most sponsors in NASCAR, mm -hmm. but the, the, their sponsorship has gone over so well. I mean, they do so much hospitality and, and they get to bring in all these body shops and, and all the guys that are using their products. So, you know, it's, it's gone extremely well, and they're real happy with the, with the program. And I'll tell you what, if what I saw in the green room here in the studio is any indication, these guys are big, big race fans, too. Oh, yeah. You know, they didn't know a lot about racing, and, and now, I mean, shoot, you know, we, we, what better can you ask for to go into to Winds Cup Racing with, with Rick Hendrick? Yep. Uh, you know, and, and also, I mean, I, my hats are off to them. I, I would have never, if I was a big company like DuPont, gone, you know, yeah, Rick Hendrick, it's a perfect opportunity, but hey, who's this 21, 22-year-old kid <laughs> that's never driven a Whisk Cup car before? So Nobody's saying that anymore, <laughs> though, Jeff. Well, I mean. I'm glad, I'm <laughs> glad, and, and I'm glad that the whole relationship has worked out well. Got to ask you a question. Again, we keep talking about Dirt to Daytona, and you did start in open-wheel racing. I mean, USAC Midgets are open-wheel race cars. Uh, you grew up out in California, but you moved to Indiana at what, age 14? Yeah, about, yeah, probably about 14 or 15 and graduated 
from high school in Indiana. Pittsburgh, Indiana. I mean, you're kind of in the shadow of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So we're going to take a little break, keep people informed of what's coming up. I'm going to ask you a question as to why you went into NASCAR as opposed to open wheel racing, say IndyCar style. That's what we'll discuss coming up next, as well as taking your phone calls. Let's show you some of the other things that are coming up in just a little bit. As we make available again on an ongoing basis, see 13301, your choice of the Jeff Gordon Diecast Bank. Go with the 1929 Model R Airplane Bank or that 125th scale Chevy Suburban. Your choice for a price of $41.50. This Friday, QVC unveils the newest, sportiest blue blocker sunglasses ever. The high-performance blue blocker Viper. Note the sleek racing-style frame, the wraparound high-res millennium lens, and the sweepstakes that could put you in the driver's seat of another Viper. A 1994 Dodge Viper. Or win you any one of our other 1,505 prizes. But first, you've got to get the details. We'll unveil them during our blue blocker sunglasses programs Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern and again at 6 p.m. Eastern. You'd look good in this pair of Vipers, don't you think? For every job, from sawing and polishing to carrying and assembling, do-it-yourselfers trust the name that means quality, reliability, and durability. Craftsman Tools. Make plans to be a part of our next two-hour demonstration of Craftsman Tools, Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, on QVC. We're back live in our studios in Westchester, Pennsylvania. If you're just tuning in, hello there, folks. My name is Dan Hughes, your program host for a show that we call Live for Race Fans Only. My guest sitting at my left, it'll be on your right, 1993 Max Card Rookie of the Year, 1994 Bush Clash winner at Daytona. You won a twin 125 qualifier at Daytona last year, and there's a lot of great things still left in store. I want you to meet Jeff Gordon if you haven't had a chance to say hello so far. Jeff, we've got a lot of time left. Talk about a little bit of your past, a lot of your future. We're going to do it with some of the best memorabilia around. Uh, here is a neat idea. I really am kind of into this. I don't know if everybody else at home is going to get excited about these or not, but uh, the people at Action Pack Cards are always doing things that are a little different, different than what other card companies will manufacture. And they have the 1994 Action Pack set that normally is available in the little wax packs when you go off to your, your hobby stores. But we run into a situation where already at the hobby end of it, it is sold out to the retailers. They can't get them anymore. They don't sell their complete sets to anybody except for us. And we'll have that coming up in just a little bit. Well, we asked these people to go ahead and create great big jumbo cards that are exactly like the small cards that you find in the wax packs. Now, we started off tonight with 2,000 of Jeff's. There's 2,500 in the edition. People in Action Pack keep 500 for themselves. They give us 2,000 uh, 2, for the air. We also have Harry Gantz available, and that's what is just a few left over from our last program when Harry was with us live on the show. And our producer, Alan, I apologize. I missed that statistic. What did you say? Over 500 of, of your card has already been purchased, and it's a cool card. Let me turn yours around and show you the folks. You say they're big. I mean, it, yeah, they're big. <laughs> these are big. Folks. They're the size of a dinner plate. They really are. It has all the statistics that you would normally find on the back of the smaller card. By the way, that number 14... Uh, that is the same number of the card in the actual set. So number 14 is where you would have found it in the set before. And that likeness is something that we'll talk about in just a little bit in another set that's coming up. They're $17. Jeff, let's do this. We'll go off to our phone lines again. We've got a ton of people who want to say hi to you. Sure, I'd okay? love to. Yeah, hi, you're live on the air with Jeff Gordon, also with Dan. What's your name? Hi, my name is Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. And I'm calling from Michigan City, Indiana. Mi yeah, right. fellow Hoosier. In Indiana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to say, Dan, it's a pleasure to talk to you, and Jeff, it's just an honor. I'm a very big fan of yours. Well, thank you. Yes, we've been uh, going to the uh, race in Michigan for about five years now, uh -huh. and we really enjoy it so much that my husband has also gotten into stock car racing within the last three years. He's racing at uh, South Bend Motor Speedway. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. 
and uh, we've really enjoyed watching. We thought you did an excellent job in the Bush class. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Michigan's been awful good to me also. Yes, yes, we enjoy watching you. Now, let me put you on the spot. Jeff is, I, I'm not going to say a newcomer to the sport because you've been racing pretty much all your life, but as far as the ranks of Winston Cup drivers, he's only been with us now for a little over a year. Why are you a Jeff Gordon fan? I'll tell you, from sitting here talking to him for the last 20 minutes, I've become a huge fan very quickly, but uh, why is he one of your favorites? I think that he has got the sharpest car on the track. <laughs> mm -hmm. I must say, it is, it is wonderful. Um, I think he's going to be a really, really good racer coming up in the, fu in the future here. Well, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that, and I know the folks at DuPont will, will appreciate that uh, you like the, the, the way the car looks, and, you know, it has. It has turned out really, really well, so we appreciate you calling, and uh, what about Indianapolis? Will we see there? Well, I doubt that we'll make it down to Indianapolis. Uh, we're pretty comfortable with going to Michigan and uh, seeing the race there. Well, that's great. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe we'll see you these, there. That sounds great. Maybe one of these days we'll make it to uh, Indy. But uh, for right now, we're going to go to Michigan and see you there. We'll be cheering you on right uh, there in turn four. That was wonderful. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you for the phone call from the Hoosier State. Thank you, and best of luck to you, Jeff. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. The large cards, again, are nothing more or less than cards that are blow-ups of the smaller cards that come in the set. And this gives some accolades on the back that are rather impressive. You were the first rookie ever in the sport to accumulate $775,000 in earnings. Yeah, that's, that's a lot a, of money. Yeah, that's a pretty good <laughs> course, I don't change. see. I don't see all that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that I tell you, it, w we did have a, a good year. I mean, yep. you, you look back at, at some of the rookies who have had good years and, and what they've gone on to do. So, uh, you know, it, it really makes me feel good. We didn't win a race, but we did just about everything else. And, and so we're, we're very proud of our, our first year. And, and uh, glad to say that uh, that we were rookies and rookie of the year in Winston. And you had set goals to achieve that to be the rookie of the year. You had also achieved the goal of taking a pole position. You did that mm -hmm. down at Charlotte, right. For the yeah. October race. Yeah, that, you talk about a, an experience. I mean, you know, I found out how just how tough it is to sit on a pole in Winston mm -hmm. Cup. I mean, every weekend uh, we were qualifying pretty well week to week. Uh, have a bad week every once in a while, but here we are, you know, qualifying in the top three or four. And man, I mean, I'm like pushing this car as hard as I can and I can't get to pull. I'm like, what do I got to do? Finally, we get to Charlotte, we knew we had a good engine, a good car. And I mean, I had to go out there and literally scare myself to death, <laughs> put that thing on the absolute edge to get that pole, and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, we, and we got it. And I mean, it was a, it was a, a thrill, really. Well, we're we'll thrill. talking about being on the edge. We're going to talk about a lot of things coming up. I need to tell you, already close to 900 of the Action Pack blow-up cards have been purchased. Now, this will be an ongoing relationship with the drivers in Action Pack and here at QVC. We are really the easiest, fastest way to get a hold of them. Only 2,500 of each driver is created. We get 2,000. Action Pack keeps 500 for their own needs. Already, the Harry Gant card is almost gone, and we've had close to 1,000 of your card purchased, Jeff. They're only $17. Think of it as an ongoing uh, collectible, if you will. It's item number is C13465. Still available, and now, what, about half of our quantity being purchased already? C13300 is the Jeff Gordon Rookie of the Year signed plaque. It's priced at $52.96. That's a one-time only. That price will evaporate at the end of the program if the item does not sell out, but it is well on its way. Also still available, that Framus. That's the three-dimensional print with a prototype card. Now, that's really important. That is a signed picture of Jeff, autographed, I should say, and then a prototype card that dates back to the beginning of 1993 before you won your Rookie of the Year status. And that's all $50. You have about 100 of those remaining at C12547. This is kind of a cool collectible. It's really fun as a program host to be able to offer things that I know you can't get anywhere else. Now, you can get those miniature half-scale helmets that look somewhat like Jeff's elsewhere, but what makes this different, and they were made for us from Simpson Race Gear at $52, this is an exclusive with the banner of 1993 Rookie of the Year across the top, and this is made just like the helmet that you wear on race day. It's just smaller. Well, I mean, the guys who build my helmets are, are building these, and so they're coming straight from Simpson Factory, and, and uh, they are very, very realistic helmets uh, and scaled down, and uh, those have gone real well. I've, man, I've had, I've been signing a lot of those lately, <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, that 
notes that people are really enjoying these? Well, they come on a solid oak base, and again, with that Rookie of the Year banner across the top, it does make it different than the ones you can get elsewhere. Simpson only created 1,500 of these. We have 1,000 of them tonight. Uh, I don't believe we're able to get any more from that. We'll see what we can do. But with a thousand of them, I have a feeling they'll go quickly. They're priced at fifty-two dollars. The item number is C one three three zero three. And Jeff, let me backtrack a little bit because I asked you a question before one of our breaks, and it asked the question: You lived in Pittsburgh, Indiana. I grew up in Indianapolis, and we kind of collectively were always right there in the shadow of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You started with USAC, you raced midget, uh, you were a champion in that division, so you had success in an open wheel race car. Right. Why are we not seeing you in an <laughs> Indy car? What was it that made that change from going? from Indy to Winston Cup, because that's a big transition. I get asked that a lot, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, generally you would think, hey, you know, this guy, he's going to go into Indianapolis or to the 500 or, or whatever, and, and I mean, basically all I was brought up around, you know, were the, the open wheel cars, the Indy cars, and, and I mean, Gasoline Alley, not far from mm -hmm. where I lived, but uh, it, it's, it's funny, I mean, I had an opportunity to, to go elsewhere in the racing and move up the scale, up the ladder, and, you know, I really didn't know what avenue to take or, or which one I was going to go to. But basically, I said, hey, whatever opportunity comes to me, I don't, you know, have mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a sponsor right now. I don't have uh, a lot of money to just take somewhere and go. So I got to go where the opportunities are to me. I mean, I, I tested stadium trucks for Toyota. And, okay. and, I mean, I did all kinds of different things. I drove a Super I didn't know that. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's, hey find out something every day but that was uh, something that I found out I definitely don't want to do I mean <laughs> I, if those guys are watching they uh, they're saying yeah I remember that he tore up our trucks left and right uh, tore up a lot of, a lot of equipment on the on those trucks those things you don't realize how tough they are to drive until you get into one but, but there, uh, there are some other folks that are a good example one that really caught me by surprise Shauna Robinson in the right. Bush Grand National Series started her racing career driving semis on the track. There's a there's a lot of drivers that start in motorcycles yep. and, and all kinds of, you don't have to start in something that's got four wheels and goes, you know, around in circles. So uh, you can come from a lot of er areas and, and uh, you know, I was very fortunate. I went to one of the driving schools and, uh, and, and met a guy who owned a race car and, and mm -hmm. it happened to be a Bush Grand National car. And at that point, you know, I, I was wanting to go stock car race. I wanted to do something that were ovals, that were something similar to what I've been doing, mm -hmm. very competitive. And, uh, you know, to me, that was NASCAR. And, I mean, it's been a perfect match. And, and you know, I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. It, it just, when things go well for you, you know that it's meant to be. And so mm -hmm. far, it's definitely been meant to be, be with NASCAR, with DuPont, with Rick Hendrick. So everything's And, and as well. they say, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, we're still making uh, available to you the miniature helmet. It's a half scale built by the same people who make the helmet that Jeff uses when he climbs in the car on Sunday afternoons. It's a one-half scale, priced at $52, with that label, Rookie of the Year, across the visor. That is an exclusive and a limited edition. There's only 1,500 of these created. We had 1,000 of them to start off with. Item number C13303. Still available. I get a lot of cards and letters every single day from people who are saying, hey, we love the t-shirts, we love all the collectibles, but give me something that's an upscale apparel item, and that's what we've got tonight. We're doing a national test market on these. If they work on the program, we'll see what we can't do to bring out more of them and different drivers, but with Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon available, these are full leather jackets at prices of $325, and the item number is A20437. Also, very popular is your choice of Looney Tunes NASCAR t-shirt, $16.08, and those are item number A19974. You know, the world of motorsports, and especially motorsports artists, uh, they really, really enjoyed working with your likeness. And a good example is Sam Bass, one of the, the individuals that was responsible for the end result of the way your automobile looks. He helped to design right. the actual paint scheme for yourself, for DuPont. This is a Jebco clock with the Sam Bass lithograph that's been printed. And the way the clock is manufactured is kind of interesting. They use a construction that is a series of multiple co coats of absolutely crystal clear epoxy. And it gives a real high depth look. This is great for a game room. It's also a good opportunity to have something with Jeff's likeness on it. Sam and I are, are pretty good buddies. And Sam and I had an opportunity to talk about this particular lithograph. It was the very first time that Sam had ever done a lithograph of a rookie in their rookie year. Well, I tell you, Sam, he does so many things. I mean, if anybody's been to Charlotte and yeah. been to the Sandwich Construction Company, uh, you know, they see a lot of Sam's work, and, and I mean, he just does some phenomenal stuff. I mean, like, 
like I said, doing this and, and designing, you know, the, really the, the way the car looks, uh, uh, Sam had a lot to do with it. And I mean, they, they, they've really done well and this. This clock is just going great. Uh, I've seen a, a couple of them uh, out and I'm, I mean, mm -hmm. I wish I had one in my house, so. <laughs> We gotta work that one out. <laughs> <We'll>, uh, <laughs> it's priced at seventy-five dollars. It's a limited edition. Only ten thousand pieces were created. Now I've had a chance to present this on the air before. This one is right now in limited quantity here on the air. We have three hundred and fifty that we started off our program with. And the item number for the clock is C one three two nine six. We'll be going off to our phone lines again in just a bit. We'll be talking to other viewers. And let's go ahead and do that. Let's go over and say hello and uh, see who's out there. Hi, you're live on the air with Jeff Gordon, also with Dan. What's your name? Yeah, Freddie Evans from uh, Fishkill, New York. Freddie, how, how you doing? Freddy? Okay, how's it going? Good. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? I just wanted to say congratulations on uh, winning last year's Rookie of the Year award. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, I don't know if you remember, right before it snowed down in Charlotte last year, I was at the fast track driving school. Uh-huh. You were testing one of your cars for uh, Sears Point, and uh, you came over and you started talking to us and stuff, and I thought that was pretty nice. I never really got a chance to thank you. And well, I just want to take the time to do that right now. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I remember that. We were out. We were in the little road course in the center, and you guys were out there on, on the big track. Right, right. Yeah, yeah we had well, a lot of fun down. I just wanted to thank you for that, though. Well, no problem. Anytime, anytime. I like to go out there every once in a while and see, see, make sure those guys are having fun, because that, that was a lot of fun. I bet you had a blast. Oh, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I, I would have paid the money just to sit in the car, much less drive <laughs> the track. It was unbelievable. Um, I know exactly what you're talking I had a chance to go through Fast Track back in December. Right. And it is a kick in the pants. Oh, it, it, it's totally unbelievable. I mean, uh, like I said, I would have just paid to sit in the car. It was, it was great. It gives you newfound respect for guys like Jeff who do it on a full-time basis with 30 other guys out there at the same time. Unbelievable. I was having a hard time. I went to the advanced course with the eight cars, and uh, it was just unbelievable, the whole thing. It really was. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the folks at Fast Track don't pay me to say this, but I highly recommend that. Uh, Andy Hillenberg, who started in open wheel racing, right. is moving his way up through the Bush Grand National uh, ranks. Uh, he is an owner of that down at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Right. Anybody gets a chance to do it, man, it, it is definitely worth the price. You'll never do anything as cool again. Oh, I'm telling you, I want to try to get down there this year again. Yeah, I'm hoping to, too. I just have to muster up the courage. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I hear you. <laughs> well, have yourself a great evening. Thanks for sharing the show. Yeah, okay, th thank you. And, uh, Jeff, good luck in uh, 94. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. $75 is a price where we have the Jebco clock. It's ready to be hung on the wall. It's quartz accurate. The item number is C13296. We've had already a little over 50 of these that have been purchased. They're on the air at $75. We've got more things coming up. Stay with us. Still available, the Jeff Gordon Limited Edition Autograph Lithograph. Price to $125. It's entitled From Dirt to Daytona. It is signed by Jeff Gordon, also by the artist Bob Rector. And we have, uh, I guess, about 300 of these that were available to us. It is a limited edition of just 1,000 pieces, and we have very few of them remaining in our inventory. All right, here we go. We've got some jackets that we're going to offer, and these are a little bit different. Uh, the satin jackets have been really popular for us in the past, but a lot of people already have them. So what we're trying to do is to offer a little bit more of an upscale look, one that's going to take us through spring. And when you raced in Virginia, it was pretty chilly, boy. That was, that was a cold day, wasn't it? It was pretty cold when I got off the plane for here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going through another cold snap. I, I think the groundhog lied is what happened. We were supposed to have a little bit warmer weather, but it didn't happen. Now, the jackets are available, obviously, with a, a Jeff Gordon jacket available to you. We also have... Uh, Dale Jarrett, we're making available to you, Terry Labonte, and we also have Kyle Petty available to you. These are done in such a way where it's a 100% cotton shell, the lining is 100% nylon, they are dry clean only. It's basically a varsity style letter jacket, if you will, with everything being done in an embroidery work. It's not applique, it is embroidered, it's considerably more difficult to do. It's a $100 price point. And because of your request, we're now offering them an extra, extra large. I got a lot of letters from guys, uh, Jeff, saying, I'm a big race fan. I thought it meant that they were really into <laughs> racing. They were saying, no, man, I'm a big race fan. <laughs> we need the extra, extra larges, so they're available to you now. Item number is A205, uh, uh, pardon me, 20594. Let's talk about something else. When we go back a little bit to last year, it was your rookie season, but for 
a lot of members of the team. It was a rookie season for them, too. Yeah, uh, you know, Rick Hendrick in the past has had three, four teams, but yep. uh, prior to, to our third team coming in there, uh, he only had two. And, and so it, it was a new beginning for a lot of us. I mean, basically built the shop from scratch, uh, race cars from scratch, and had to put a lot of things together in a short time. And, and so, you know, we're, we're very fortunate for everything to come together. I mean, Rick Hendrick has all the resources you can ask for to mm -hmm. have four or five teams, but, uh, you know, to make it all work together with, with three, and, and it was really nice working with Kenny Schrader, Ricky Rudd at that time, and, and their crew chiefs and teams uh, helped us a lot. I don't think we could have really done it uh, come into the sport, you know, and, and do as well as we did without without their their help. So but you, your team was comprised of you had guys from open wheel racing, right? You had Ray, of course. Uh, correct me if wasn't your parts man a plumber? <laughs> you correct? might know more about them than I do. I don't know. I'm learning something new here on the show. But uh, I tell you, they they came from a lot of different areas. We. Uh, you know, Ray, I mean, he pretty much picks, you know, a, lo a lot of the things that we do. I mean, he, he picks the people and, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of the guys weren't, didn't necessarily have to have NASCAR Winston Cup experience. He wants somebody young, uh, somebody ambitious. You know, mm -hmm. he wants guys in there that want to be winners, that want to work hard because it takes a lot of hard work. To, to get you know to the top where, where you know earn hard and, and these guys are winning championships uh, and the harder you work during the week you know the better uh, you're going to on be Sunday. on weekends yeah we'll tell you what we're going to do Jeff we're going to take a little break because we've got to go over to our lucky number machine Cheryl is going to draw a new four digit lucky number for us you'll notice the jacket she's wearing happens to be the Jeff Gordon jacket we'll be back more to racing in just a bit A new four-digit lucky number is drawn every hour on the QVC Cable Shopping Channel. Every time that number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you notify us by phone that you have a match before the next lucky number is drawn, your QVC account will be credited with 10 shopper dollars, and you will also be automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. If you don't already have a membership number, get yours now. It's completely free, no purchase necessary, and there's absolutely no obligation. Just call toll-free 1-800-345-1515, and a QVC membership number will be assigned to you on the phone. Current lucky number is 6126. 6126 is the current QVC lucky number. The choice of the 1994 NASCAR driver varsity jackets. Choice of drivers, Jeff Gordon, Kyle Petty, Mark Martin, Darryl, uh, Dale Jarrett, Daryl Waltrip, and Terry Labonte. Keep in mind with Terry, that is updated 1994 as far as the number on the car, the likeness, the same is true for all the others. And those are available at $100. Item number is A20594. in Ireland. This St. Patrick's Day, the luck, lore, and beauty of the Irish shine bright on QVC viewers because we're bringing you 24 hours of clothing, jewelry, and domestic items all proudly made right here in the green hills of Era. Made and imported just for you for this one day event. We'll also experience the bounty of Ireland's culture as we explore the fascinating legends and traditions of the Emerald Isle. It's been almost a year in the planning stages and I really am looking forward to showing you some of the things that we found here. So join me, my fellow QVC host, and our guests for our St. Patrick's Day celebration all day Thursday on QVC. I'll see you then. You don't need a palace, and you certainly don't need a fortune to enjoy tasteful butler accent furniture. Traditional designs in selected hardwoods and choice veneers. Watch our first ever hour of Butler Accent Furniture, Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. John and Yoko, March 22nd.
1969. Where were you during the bed-in? John Lennon memorabilia. Late Monday, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. Once again, and welcome to our program. If you're just tuning in, hello there. My name is Dan Hughes, another edition of Race Fans Only Show. Our guest tonight, 1993 Max Card, Rookie of the Year. What a great title. <laughs> I like that. Also, the winner of the 1994 Daytona Bush Clash. Also, back last year, 1993, uh, uh, winner of one of the Twin 125 Gatorade Qualifiers. Our guest is, is Jeff Gordon. We've got a lot of different items that we're going to try to bring to you in the next 60 minutes. We're already halfway through our program. And these are items that have been phenomenally popular in the past. Now, we've updated them for 1994. We've added some names of drivers in these. These are the uh, uh, very popular moon mugs at $17 and then 75 cents. The way that they're designed, real simple. Let me grab yours if I can. Jeff, what it does is it starts off with a double-lined acrylic mug. And inside, you're going to see a free-floating banner, if you will. So that DuPont logo, the number 24, that'll slide back and forth. It's kind of like a little plastic shield. The liquid that's on the inside is FDA approved, it's non-toxic. You put this baby in the freezer and let it freeze overnight, and then you go ahead and you pour in your favorite beverage, whatever it might happen to be, whether it be you know, a brewski, it might be your favorite <laughs> soft drink beverage, the kids can use them for lemonade, mom and dad can use them for iced tea. The rules are simple, keep them out of the dishwasher, keep them out of the microwave, don't put hot beverages in there. But when you get ready to, to watch a race, like say uh, Daytona in the middle of July, <laughs> when it's 110 degrees in the car, you're going to be able to sit back in, in your favorite easy chair or out there on the patio. This will keep a drink cold for up to two hours at room temperature and up to a full hour at 100 degrees. Well, that's, so that's a great, great way to go. We've got I, a I full complement of drivers. We've got Jeff's available to you. We've got Bill Elliott. This is the one that everybody's been asking for, and that makes sense. <laughs> the Sterling Marlin mug, the winner of this year's Daytona 500, underneath the uh, Kodak Racing emblem. So that is available to you. We have Dale Jarrett available to you as well. And we also have updated for 1994 in number 28, Ernie Irvin, with uh, Robert Yates, the Texaco Haviland team. And again, these swing back and forth, so I can, there, see if I can get that without the handle in the way. But this is the one that we're featuring tonight, DuPont Refinish Racing, $17.75, and number 24 with your signature kind of reproduced down here at the bottom. A couple other questions that I've got for you. When you did start out, your family was very, very supportive in you getting into racing. I mean, your stepfather still has a big hand in it. Right. And you were telling me that it was actually a situation where, where mom and dad packed up part of their business and moved you from the West Coast to the, to the Midwest. Yeah, I owe a lot to them. Uh, you know, I, out in California, you had to be 16 with a valid driver's license to, to be able to race at the level uh, with sprint cars, like what I was wanting to race at the mm -hmm. time. and, and uh, so, you know, it wasn't like me saying, hey, mom, come on, let's move, let's get out of here. But uh, they were really into it, very supportive, and, and uh, they knew, you know, how important the racing was and, and how well things were going. Mm -hmm. And we had already traveled back and forth to the Midwest and back, and, uh, you know, just said, hey, let's, uh, let's just move back there as much time as we spend back there. And, and uh, you know, it's really helped out a lot. Well, let's do this. We'll go off to our phone lines again, and we'll say hello. Hi, you're live on the air with Jeff Gordon, also with Dan. What's your name? Harry. Harry, call it from where? Stockton, California. Out in California. <laughs> Another native California. It's good to have you on the program. Do you have a question or a comment for our guest? Uh, question for Jeff. Mm -hmm. How you doing, Jeff? Doing good. How about you? Oh, uh, can't wait for you to get out to Sears Point and see that big car out there. There you go. I'm looking forward to it also. Um, what's the preparation involved? Do you get enough seat time for the road course back east? So when you come out here, you're pretty much all set up, ready to go. Yeah, it's tough for us to come and, and test out in California, like, like you know, it, it's just a long way. So a lot of times what we have to do, uh, like, like the caller earlier, we actually took our car and, and tested in the infield of Charlotte Motor Speedway, which isn't much of a road course. Actually, mm -hmm. if you go one way, it's all left-hand turns. But what we do is we'd go both ways. I, I'd go make some left-hand uh, okay. runs, and then I'd stop. We'd make some adjustments and go out and make some right-hand runs. So... Uh, yeah, it's tough. Some people uh, go to Atlanta, run the road course there, uh, maybe Watkins Glen, 
But, uh, you know, we'll, I try to get as much seat time. The main thing is not necessarily the left and right hand turns as much as the shifting, the, the, because we have a Jericho transmission, which you don't use a clutch to shift. And, and that's what the trick is for us to, to be able to run fast on the road course and just be able to slam that thing in and out of gear without having to sometimes even lift the gas. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't, uh, I, uh, Go, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. We when didn't you came leave out you hanging. When you came out to California the first time, that's the first thing that stood out on that track is that new paint scheme on that car. Well, I'm glad you like it. We've had a lot of compliments, and uh, the people from DuPont are here. They'll appreciate that. Thank you. And you'll thanks be seeing it out in California again this season. Right. Yeah, thanks for your phone call this evening. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. We're going to wrap up on the moon mugs. This really, it's a great idea. The kids love these things. It's a very quick and easy way to be able to take a soft drink or your favorite beverage and keep it cool for a very long period of time. The item number is F1838, available in a different series of drivers, each one individually priced at $17.75. We still have available your choice of 1994 NASCAR driver t-shirts. With the associate sponsors and the contingency sponsorship changing on so many of the automobiles and drivers changing to different teams, it's important to keep up to date with your fashions when you're at the track. And at $29.25, you pick your favorite driver, chances are very good that we'll have them available to you. The item number is A20434 at a price of under $30. Those are all over print graphic t-shirts that were actually silkscreen before being manufactured. That's how you get those bright, vibrant colors all over. And the matching hats are still available. Of course, we're featuring Jeff's hat style, but we also have other drivers available as well. $17.75 is the price, and available in limited quantities. Item number is A20436. You, again, had set some goals. There were four goals that you said that you would set at the beginning of the year. You wanted to be Rookie of the Year. You did that. You wanted to have a poll. You succeeded in that. Wanted to finish in the top ten, and then also wanted to uh, win a race. Win a race, but right. two out of four ain't bad. I'll tell you what. We're and we were in the top ten in points uh, most of the yep. time. Finished second two or three times, so we were, we were real close. You know, we were we were happy with the way the year uh, you know ended up, but uh, maybe just not quite as satisfied as we wanted to be. But uh, we're, hopefully, we'll come through this year. Well, so they, they say that a true champion is never quite satisfied. There's always that next step that never you know. Uh, you're never completely fulfilled. Well, Earnhardt won, you know, I mean, he, he's won six championships now. I'm sure he wants to win seven. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you win one race and you reach that goal and you say, hey, now we can win one. We won't win another one. And we finished second. We don't want to finish second anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done for me lately? That's a, we've got a, a plaque that really commemorates one of those things that you will always be remembered for. And I did a little mathematics, and I'll tell you what, this is a scary statistic. Uh, they talked last year that it was such a bumper crop of rookies that they had to go back to 1979 when Dale Earnhardt was Rookie of the Year to come up with the same type of, of quality in right. driver. When Dale Earnhardt won his title in 1979, you were seven years of age. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's, I mean, we've come a long way real quick. This, this plaque celebrates that Rookie of the Year from Max Race Cars, and we have this as our one time only. Our today's special value sold out very quickly. This plaque up until tonight when we first aired it had never before been seen. It was an introduction for you. It gives those people at home an opportunity. If you don't live close to the racetrack, you don't get a chance to travel and see the, the action on Sunday afternoons in person, this gives you a chance to have an autographed picture of Jeff Gordon at $52.96. This is limited to 1,024 pieces. We have all of them. They were made for us, and they're a little bit different. There's a reason for it. You'll notice the color scheme on Jeff's car. That's a little different. Your driving style tends to be a little different as well. <laughs> and we did it in a, a blue marbleization. It really does stand out. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, the Rookie of the Year points are added up a little different than just regular Winston Cup points. How's it work? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. It, it's pretty complicated. Uh, you know, the way it, it works out is unless you fin you got to finish in the top 10 to get bonus points. But mm -hmm. anywhere out of the top 10, it doesn't matter. It, say, uh, last year, if, if I finished 11th and Bobby Labonte finished 23rd or whatever, I would have gotten 10 points and he would have gotten 9. So mm -hmm. it's really hard 
to get ahead in, in the Rookie of the Year, you know, and you go from race to race like that, you know, with a basically a one-point difference uh, no matter where you finish. But once you start getting into those top ten finishes, that's when it all changes. You, you go, you know, ten, nine, eight, all the way up. Uh, or if you, if you win the race, you get ten extra bonus points mm -hmm. and all the way down to tenth place. So, uh, you know, with those top tens that we had last year, that really helped us uh, get ahead in the points. Plus, they have bonuses at the end of the year or at middle uh, of the season of who's leading. And, and you know, there's, it's pretty complicated. I don't know who came up with the system, but uh, it's tough to get ahead in, in the race. It's points. real hard to keep abreast of it. They also... Uh if you have a couple finishes that weren't your best, they're kind of thrown out of the competition, so to speak. Yeah, and they do that also. I mean, you know, I can't even remember all the things that, that they mm -hmm. do. And uh, yeah, they, they throw out, uh, you know, I think they they take your best 15 finishes. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, at the they, at the end of the year, they start throwing out some races and adding some races. So it, it's pretty interesting the way they do it. Well, here you are. You're this old veteran now. I mean, <laughs> they peel that yellow stripe off the back of the car. We've got another crop of rookies coming up. We've got guys like Ward Burton and Steve Grissom and Joe Nemechek. A good group. And, good group I mean, there's a lot of really good drivers coming up. Ricky and, kicked my, my butt here <laughs> last week. <laughs> yeah, and, and Roy Allen Jr. being on the pole yeah, at Daytona. Lloyd. Or Lloyd, pardon me. That's, uh, I mean, that's, it's going to be a heck of a year. If you had to give some advice to these guys coming up, like Chuck Bown and Todd Bodine, uh, what would you say? I mean, what's going to make the difference? Well, you know, I race with most and yep. a lot of those guys in Bush Grand National, and, and I mean, uh, they, they all have a lot of experience, as much or more experience than me, but it's, it's different when you get into that 3,500-pound car with more horsepower, uh, racing against you know, a little bit more experienced drivers. It's, uh, it's definitely different, and it takes that experience. Just, it takes a lot of laps, and, and I think that you know, the main thing that I've learned from last year is patience, and, and I told myself that all last year, but still I'd get in the race car you know, and, and drive the car too hard and, mm -hmm. and either wear the tires out or, or uh, get myself in, in, in trouble. And so really, patience is, is the key to, to go out there. Just if the car's not perfect, wait for a pit stop. Uh, wait you know, for the track to come to you. Uh, and if the car is perfect, hey, don't just try to go out there and, and you know, just crash through the field and get to the front. Uh, you know, let it, just take some time and, and mm -hmm. you know, that to me has helped me be a lot more consistent. Already we've had three top tens this year and I think it's because of that, uh, uh, that patience that I have. Now you won the Max Race Card Rookie of the Year title in 93. You did make an appearance on the Winston Cup circuit in 92. You ran one race. Right. Where Richard is that Petty, cutoff? Mm -hmm. Richard Petty's last race. So that was, yeah. a, that was a neat experience to, to be there. Uh, Richard gave out these uh, you know, little commemorative belt buckles mm -hmm. to everybody that made that race. So that's something that I'll never forget, uh, a collectible item that, that I've got uh, in, in store. And, and there was a, there a lot of people were touting it as uh, a great driver retiring, a great driver coming up. How many races can you race as a rookie in the Winston Cup scene? Okay before you are actually fully running for that Rookie of the Year title? Right, five. Uh, okay. Yeah, you've got to be able to make, and uh, you know, five races. Uh, uh, you can go and, and, and attempt to qualify for as many, but if once you make that fifth race, I think it's once you make five races, then, then you're no longer considered a rookie. So you'll see guys that'll do two or three races a year and until they get with a team uh, that mm -hmm. they feel is, you know, is ready to go for the full circuit, uh, you'll see them do two, three, four, whatever. Give them an opportunity year. for seat time. Yeah. Okay. The other question I've got for you is, what made that determination that you were going to come up from Bush Grand National to Winston Cup? Was it the opportunity with Rick Hendricks, or what, what actually put together the timing situation that put you there in 1993? It was obviously a very good choice with you becoming <laughs> the, the Rookie of the Year. But Well, when a guy like Rick Hendricks comes to you and says, <laughs> hey, hey, kid, I want you, you know, to drive my race car, it's pretty hard to turn him down. But really... Uh, a lot of good things happened uh, that year. And in, in 1992, uh, won three Bush Grand National mm -hmm. events, 11 poles. It just had a great season and, and won, you know, biggest money winner in Bush Grand National. Uh, and, and so, you know, it's like uh, they say Bush Grand National is a stepping stone to Winston Cup, and, and it's very, very true because uh, the, the car owners are looking for new and up and coming drivers and uh, they look towards Bush Grand National and uh, I was just very fortunate to have a good year and have a few people calling and, and uh, uh, you know a great opportunity with Rick Hendrick and, and we didn't even have a sponsor at that time I mean mm -hmm. you know I, I signed uh, with Rick knowing that we didn't have a sponsor and, and you know then it turns out we get to me I mean the greatest 
sponsor in NASCAR today, uh, you know, with DuPont. And who would have guessed that, that we would have got them on board and, and everything go as well as it has? Do things translate from, from Bush Grand National to Winston Cup? I mean, you get a lot of the Winston Cup drivers that, that will drive on a Saturday afternoon Bush Grand <laughs> National. I mean, you've got Dale Earnhardt doing right, it, Dale Jarrett, right. Ernie Irvin. Ernie, bunch of guys. Harry yeah. Does it help? Uh, before you come up with some of these guys like Chuck Bowne and, and Ward Burton to have said, hey, I've already competed against these guys. Right. Does that translation Definitely. work? Definitely. Uh, you know, really, if you don't run Bush Grand National or maybe ARCA or, or something very similar to Winston Cup and you just try to jump into Winston Cup, you're never going to make it. You mm -hmm. know, you're, you're really going to have a tough time with it. And, and that experience that I got in the two years I ran Bush Grand National uh, helped me out tremendously. And, you know, I'll admit, nothing is going to totally prepare you for Winston Cup, and that's why that first year is tough. Um, but, uh, you know, more and more guys are going to Bush Grand National, going to ARC or whatever, to, to get that experience that they need to get to Winston Cup. Uh, you know, Winston Cup's everybody's goal. I mean, that's where, you know, the guys who are diehard racers and, mm -hmm. and want to be a race car driver for a living, I mean, Winston Cup is the ultimate goal, but, you know, there's no reason to just take that big step. If, if you've got, you know, a sponsor, whatever, to get involved, I would still suggest, hey, step it down and, and, and try Bush Grand National, National for a year or two. Yeah, and it's, it's, again, we're continuing to make the plaque available. It's $52.96. It is our one time only. We started off, there's only 1,024 of these who were made. They were made for you tonight. That's a, a QBC exclusive. Each one is signed by Jeff. In fact, you probably have writer's cramp. <laughs> just real, real fast. Do you remember where the picture was taken? Uh, well, the picture, I don't know where the picture was taken. But You've got I a camera in your face a I lot. I definitely yeah. remember, remember the picture. Uh, I know it's, it's a you know a very recent picture because it has Snickers on there, yep. McDonald's, some of the new, so, so, new sponsors. Yeah. sponsors. Well, we're going to make it available. Again, it commemorates that Rookie of the Year status. It is signed. It is available at $52.96. We'll keep you informed of how they're doing in quantity. We'll be back in just a bit. It's 24 hours of Ireland's Best this Thursday as we include these jewelry selections in our St. Patrick's Day celebration. Item J13459 is the Rhinestone Terra brooch. This antique silver finish pin continues to sell out every time it's offered. It's an elegant design adorned with clear faceted rhinestones and large cabochon multicolor stones. We're offering item J13459 for the QVC price of just $15. The Irish Shamrock Watch is item J15309. Highlighted as the only Shamrock Watch featured all day, this novel timepiece can be worn by men or women. It displays a Shamrock Spray watch face, green leather strap, and quartz movement. QVC price, $28. See them both at approximately 6 p.m. Eastern when Steve Bryant continues our St. Patrick's Day celebration Thursday on QVC. Welcome back to our show. I hope you're having a good time. I'm, I'm having, having a blast. I'm having a great time. <laughs> We've got about 40 minutes left in this particular episode, this edition of For Race Fans Only. Our guest tonight, Jeff Gordon, 1993 Max Race Card Rookie of the Year. We've got timepieces that are made from a company by the name of Floridian. And Floridian is really the premier watchmaker as far as those companies that are putting together the look of Winston Cup designs. We right now have a rather full complement for you. Now, a while back, we had an opportunity to introduce these with one driver's name. We did a national test on it to see what people would think of them, and people went nuts. So now we have other watches that are available to you. Let me run through the list of drivers that are currently on our, our watch schedule. We've got Kyle Petty in the Mellow Yellow Pontiac. We have Rusty Wallace now in the Ford. We have Harry Gant. Keep in mind, Harry has announced his retirement. Uh, we had a chance to talk to him just right after Daytona. This is his, his last lap tour, if you will. Mark Martin, and then also, of course, Jeff Gard uh, Gordon. With the way I can't believe I just mispronounced your name, Jeff. <laughs> With these designs, the way they're created, it's getting late, isn't it? It is getting late, man. <laughs> Actually, what happened? Have you ever been talking and you bite your tongue? <laughs> that's what happened. Pain. I just chopped right down on that thing. We've got a silk screening process here that's actually a printing process, 
And every color that you see, and I talked to some of the folks who, who actually make these watches down in Florida, and they admitted that this particular watch design for you was a nightmare because of all the colors <laughs> of the car. So that, it yeah, to emulate that, they've got to go with each color individually. It's a Swiss accurate timepiece assembled here in the United States with a leather band and on the air at $66.75. That's really a, a great design. Uh, speaking of, of color schemes and things like that, have you noticed that there have been, a, and I don't mean to stereotype, but have you noticed that you've had a lot of female fans that root for you because first and foremost they started off because they liked the way the car looked? Yeah, it's funny, you know, I mean, and you look at the way different people, you know, why they get into ra the racing or, or what attracts them to it and, and, you know, for the women a lot of times as well, that, you know, this, that looks good and this looks good and, hey, you know, that's, that's great. I mean, that's a, really what, what DuPont mm -hmm. was out to do and, and that's attract the, the fans and, uh, you know, it is a great looking car and you can't blame them for that. Uh, you know, some people do it because, they're competitive and they win and then others are doing it because it looks great so uh, you know I, I'm really really glad to, to hear that they like it there's there's something about your personality and it's it's difficult to describe but you are a very mild-mannered young man when you're sitting here and when you're up against the fence or the railing signing autographs for the fans and yet when you put on that helmet I mean you are one determined guy <laughs> um, how does it all translate Jeff are you I don't know if it's just the type of racing that I've been you know doing or, or if it's just I don't if, if it's just my personality I don't know but yeah you know when when I get in the race car uh, uh, I'm, I mean I'm a hard charger I, mm -hmm. I like to stand on the gas and, and try to get it to the front and, and you know with midgets and sprint cars I mean they call them sprint cars because they're a sprint race I mean you start mid or towards the back of the field sometimes mm -hmm. and you got 30 40 laps boom to jump to the front and I had a real problem with that when I came into NASCAR because you got these you know, start out two or three hundred mile races now, four or five hundred mile races, and you've got, you know, three or four hours to do this in, and there's no reason to go out there and just, and just try to get your way to the front as fast mm -hmm. as you can, although, you know, we're still out there racing, and, and when you're a racer, I mean, you can't take, you know, second place, uh, you want, you want to get out there, you want to lead every lap and, and win every race, but uh, tough to do in Winston Cup. Well, there have been so many comparisons. I've heard you compared to a young Dale Earnhardt. I've heard the references to your likeness of Davey Allison's driving style. It has to be a little frustrating on your part to, to have those names bannered about. I mean, those are two great drivers, of course, but uh, are there times when you wish people would see you for your own particular driving style as opposed to comparing you with other names? Well, you know, they do that, uh, I mean, a lot with any really new driver coming up. And, and I mean, heck, I, I can't... Uh, you know, I down anybody or anything for, for compare me with a, you know, or, or put me in the same sentence with an Earnhardt, Davey, uh, uh, Richard. I mean, that, you know, that to me is a great honor. And, and, you know, I mean, it's tough to live up to some of those things. They're, they're tough shoes to fill. But uh, really, you know, I, I really don't pay attention to a lot of things that are said. I know what my goals are, my intentions are, and what, you know, what I'm out there to do is win races. And so, Basically, you know, I, I mean, I go out there with, with that in mind, not, not thinking, well, hey, they say I'm supposed to do this or, or mm -hmm. I've got to do this, I've got to you know, beat this guy. So, you know, really, uh, I don't really pay attention to, to a lot of those things. And you realize it's really just a matter of time before people are saying, hey, so-and-so, you know, he's like a young Jeff Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the frame is, we only have about 50 of those remaining in our inventory. Those are item number C124. Uh, I need my glasses. See, one, two, five, four, seven. Thank you, guys. And that's available to you with not only the signed frame from Jeff Ford, but also we're talking about the opportunity to pick up the 1993 prototype card from uh, the, the same company. And those are available with very few of them in the inventory at a price of just $50. I'm getting old. <laughs> I can't even see the screen anymore. We've got one is one of the best collectibles, and I'll tell you why. It's a 1994 action-packed complete set. And the reason why I mention the importance of this particular item is that Action Pack does not sell complete sets to anybody right. except for here at QVC. We are the only place in the nation where you can pick them up. In fact, it used to be where you go off and you buy that, that bubble gum and you get an Action Pack set, little wax pack, and you get a few cards in there. Even in the wax packs, they are sold out to the hobby market so that people are already having a tough time finding them. What we're offering tonight at a price of $63.64 is not only the complete set, but we are also offering to you two prototype cards with uh, Kyle Petty and then also the Mellow Yellow Pontiac. 
And then, one of my favorite pieces of collectibles, Jeff and I have it standing behind us, this is an uncut card sheet. There was a series that was done, and again, you can't help but have that, <laughs> that combining of, of elements between the champion, Dale Earnhardt, and the likeness of the challenger, Jeff Gordon. This is the uncut card sheet that was put out supposedly as a separate set from the people at Action Pack, and we're throwing that in as well as $63.64. We don't have many of these left. There were only a thousand of them that we could get for tonight's show. We're now down to considerably less than half of that. Let me show you some of these cards. We were having some fun of these. I tell you, this is a great set. I mean, yeah, it uh, is. And, you know, you, you talk about being in the same sentence here. I'm in the same box or <laughs> whatever uh -huh. with, with Earnhardt, and, and that's that's great. You know, that, I mean, it, it really means a lot, and, and that's that's going to be a hot seller, I'm sure. Okay. We have, uh, the way it's set up is they are three-dimensional cards. They're like puffy cards, if you want. It's real hard to show on a TV screen. That's but they are one of my three-dimensional likenesses. Well, for obvious reasons. <laughs> that makes sense. Explain what the uh, the trophy is. Oh, I can just remember that, that moment. Uh, that's when we won the poll at Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got my hat turned backwards, kissing that trophy. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, I, I was, you know I'm happy when I'm kissing the trophy. When you're kissing the trophy? <laughs> Well, here's a, I'll just kind of rifle through some of these and give you an opportunity to see what you have. Now, again, some of these are, I don't want to say outdated, but they are history lessons in little cards. Right. I mean, Ernie Irvin, of course, has moved from Morgan McClure to Robert Yates Racing. This gives you an opportunity, give you an idea of how updated it is. It says from number four to number 28. It also takes you from things like Jeff Bodine from the Motocraft team to his own team in number seven. Covering it up with my fat finger there, but that's there. And also, there are rookie cards in here. Let me kind of run through these, because this is real important. What they've done is they've taken the rookies and put them on Harleys. I, rem I remember my rookie card and what they made us do. And uh, they're, they're uh, adding on to that collection, I, I guess. We were in cowboy outfits just yep. with guns and horses. What, and what do they call it? Uh, young Guns. Young Guns, yeah. Well, the set was done in uh, 1993. But it just gives you a chance. And I really highly urge you to consider, if you are a new race fan, to pick up this set, and I'll tell you why, it gives you a look at all the faces. So you can kind of put all of that together and give you an opportunity to see those folks that work so hard in the sport of Winston Cup racing. Uh, Kenny Schrader, we have names like, I can't see from the glare, Joe Nemechek, and this is his rookie card. Some of these guys look pretty comfortable on Harley, don't he, they? He looks like he's riding down the road. <laughs> Here's Steve Grissom. Half of our quantity is already ordered. By the way, that quantity counter, when it says 208, we are way behind on that. Our phone lines are very busy. On the back of each card, you're going to get information that tells you a little bit more about each person. And let me grab another card and show you something. Do you remember the blow-up card that we offered a little while ago at $17? This card of Jeff is that card in its original format with 31 career starts listed on the back. Those statistics that break it down as uh, 7 top 5s, 11 top 10s. Um, it, it gives you a chance to see what the smaller card looks like, and then we still have the larger card available to you at a price of $17, and we'll give you more information about that. The way Action Pack has done their cards is as if each one of the automobiles is kind of busting through a, a paper ring, if you will. Yeah, they're, they're a great card. They've really just blown up the market now of, of cards. They all, the cards almost started falling down, and now Action Pack's come out with such quality cards that uh, you know, they're going crazy now with the cards again. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I mean... I remember growing up and collecting baseball cards, and I don't know if you were into that when you were a kid or not. I was racing now. Uh, yeah, oh, you didn't have time for that stuff, did you? <laughs> well, there was one uh, segue. I used to put the, the baseball cards in the spokes of the bike so it sounded like a right. motorcycle. Oh, yeah, I guess I could say I did do that. <laughs> so did you start off with any two-wheel racing at all? Actually, What's the first thing you ever drove? The, the first thing I ever raced uh, was a bicycle. I was four years old when I started racing bicycles. I had, we had a BMX track not far from my house, and uh, other than that, uh, you know, went straight to four wheels after that we every once in a while i can remember uh you know having a little fire truck and all and we had a big hill at my house uh huh uh, right in front and we'd get the top of that hill and just <laughs> race and, i mean i can remember doing that you know from four or five years old and uh, probably still got some scars from the big hill <laughs> where it all started with 63 dollars and 64 cents the item number is c13047 our producer alan has told us they are well on their way to selling out by the way when they're gone that's it they're gone we won't be able to get any more back in Still available, here is the bigger card. These are the blow-up cards. We've got one of Harry Gant, very limited there. Also, Jeff Gordon's is limited. Each dryer that comes on the air during our For Race Fans Only season will have a blow-up card from Action Pack. It'll be priced at around $17. Gives you a chance to have an ongoing collectible. Item number here, C13465.
We're going to take a little break from our For Race Fans Only show because in just a minute, I'm going to draw today's fifth winner in QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings. Here's how those $1,000 shopping spree drawings work. Entering QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings is fun and easy. Once an hour, QVC draws a new lucky number. Every time, the current lucky number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you call QVC before the next lucky number is drawn, you're awarded 10 QVC shopper dollars, and you're automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. That's right. QVC is now giving away five $1,000 shopping spree prizes every day. There's a new drawing every three hours starting at 11.30 a.m. That's 11.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., 5.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m., and 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time every day of the week. Remember, all you have to do is match the first four or last four digits of your QVC membership number with the current lucky number and notify QVC to have your name in the prize drum from which our five $1,000 winners are drawn. If you don't have a QVC membership number, call QVC right now and a membership number will be assigned to you absolutely free right over the phone. Now let's find out who the next winner is of a $1,000 QVC shopping spree. <laughs> There's a sealed envelope inside this drum for each entry validated yesterday. Let's find out who the next $1,000 shopping spree winner is. Okay, congratulations to <laughs> whoever sealed the envelope. Congratulations to Stephen Petrowitz of Worcester, Massachusetts. Congratulations. You're today's fifth winner in QVC's $1,000 shopping spree drawings. Remember, we've got a new drawing every three hours each day. We start at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Stephen, congratulations. Stay tuned for our next hourly lucky number drawing coming up within the next hour because you could qualify to win one of tomorrow's five $1,000 QVC shopping sprees. about this particular piece since I first saw the prototype a while back. This may be one of the coolest collectibles that we've ever offered on the year. It's got to be one of the greatest ones I've seen in a while. This, this really is neat. Uh, we've got one hanging up in our shop, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact. matter of fact, I mean, i got a good story about this. Uh, you might want to go ahead and give him some information <laughs> <at> first. <laughs> He's but... getting used to the format. <laughs> this is called the race car sign. It's 120 bucks here on the air. It's C13360. Shipping and handling on this is $5.97. It hangs on the wall. You're going to get the screws to go ahead and mount it. You get instructions to come along with it as well. Everything that you need to go ahead and put it on that wall is included. And that comes in a little packet that you're going to find here on the back end of it. And the neat thing about this is you've got your contingency sponsors and your associate sponsors right there on the automobile. Oh, this thing is so detailed. A good friend of mine, as a matter of fact, uh, Ronnie Stevens in, in uh, North Carolina mm -hmm. is the one that does these. You know, it's a company and, called Racing Decor. Right, and I mean, the, the quality is just unbelievable. And that's what you're seeing. The, the things that are really making it, the things that are going big these days is quality. And I mean, mm -hmm. he's got every associate sponsor on there that, I mean, this thing looks exactly like my race car. If you put this on a racetrack somewhere and, and scaled it down with a camera, you would never know the difference. And it breaks down to being an exact scale. By the way, the, the actual material that's used here is a form of plastic, but it's not that real lightweight, flimsy stuff. I mean, when I first saw it, I thought it was plexiglass right. with the way it's designed. It has a high gloss lacquer on it, and it is very true to detail. Everything from the, the color scheme, from the folks at, that DuPont have put on the automobile, to things like Snickers, which is, if I'm not mistaken, a new associate sponsor for you, is right. it not? Right, Snickers candy bars. And they actually, this is an actual DuPont paint that, that is on this car. I mean, they went to DuPont in Wilmington, and, and uh, they told me that just not long ago that this actually is, is paint on this car. So it's pretty darn exact. You even have things like the overflow valve, right? kind right. of uh, emulated on there, the Goodyear racing tires. And if you look closely inside, you're going to find a replica of Jeff's helmet behind the safety netting, and up here on the top, you're going to find the likeness of the signature. Now, it looks kind of different when I'm holding it here in my hands, 
Well, when you mount this baby on a wall, it looks like you've got a small race car in your living room. They're cool. They really are. We, like I said, we've got one hanging up in our shop, and uh, I mean, these things have been going like crazy yep. from what I understand. Motivation, there's, there is a place down in Charlotte, right across from the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's called the Sandwich Construction Company. Right. And when you go in this place, if you ever get a chance, man, it's right across the street from the, the speedway. They've got sheet metal. I mean, we're talking full-size sides of automobiles in there. Usually torn up. No, 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 yeah, good point. And that seems to be kind of the motivation for being able to take something like this and put it on the wall and be able to, to have the likeness of, of your favorite driver's car right there in the den or in the studio or out in the workshop or what have you. This is the motivation for the race car drivers now because now we don't have to go tear up a race car on Sunday <laughs> to, get, one of to these. get something in sandwich construction. <laughs> well, they're available. We've got them at $120. You're really going to like the quality. By the way, just as it is with any show here on the air, not just for race fans only, but if you purchase something, you're not 100% satisfied, you return it within 30 days. We fully refund your money. We'll pay the shipping and handling as well. And with this, it's $120, $597 is the shipping and handling charge. And the item number is C13360. It's giving you an opportunity to have something that kind of looks like it comes right out of the Sandwich Construction Company. And just a fun idea, C13360. We only have a few hundred of those remaining in our inventory. I wanted to give you an update. And the choice of the Jeff Gordon Diecast Banks Still available, that Chevy Suburban, that's a 125th scale, or we have a, an antique-style monoplane design. See, 13301, I get cards and letters all the time from people saying, give us more die cast. We thought you might like the pieces that were a little bit different. Also still available, that Jeff Gordon one-half scale Simpson helmet at a price of $52. That's item number C13303. That is an exclusive and a limited edition. Now, there are other helmets that you might have seen in the past. This one with that Rookie of the Year banner across the visor makes it a little bit different. Limited edition for you at $52. That's available in limited quantities. Coming up, one of the, the biggest, most exciting things to happen in the world of motorsports is coming up at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the inaugural running of the Brickyard 400. Tonight, we've got an item that's going to combine hats and T-shirts together as an item number of A20671. We have for them for $31. Shipping and handling is $4.47. These are new to QVC. We've never had an opportunity to present them in the past. We started off our program with 1,000 of these because you've asked for them. A lot of people have been asking for that memorabilia, getting very, very limited at this particular point. Jeff, I got a question. Now, you did some testing at that first original test date back, uh, when was it, August of last year? Oh, I, it was after the, the Michigan race, so it would okay. have been, yeah, late, sometime in uh, later August last year. Now, I mean, you and, and I both lived in Indiana, and Man, that track changed a ton to be able to put those 3,500-pound cars on there. They, they had to do a lot. Uh, they had to, to raise the walls. Uh, mm -hmm. They made a, a, a warm-up lane around the bottom of the racetrack. I don't know if they did just for the stock cars. I mean, I think it, it's helped them, uh, you know, with the Indy cars also. But uh, they, they've done a lot of work out there. That place has, has come a long way. It's incredible. Now, let me ask you a question. I'm sure that when you were growing up and thinking about stock car driving, that Daytona was the big one. I mean, that's... When you, anybody who has been to the Daytona Motor Speedway, you pull in and there's a sense of awe. That place is huge. Uh, and it, Indianapolis is very similar to that. Well, it's very similar and then very much different. Uh, I mean, Daytona, you're wide open, you know, drafting and everything. Uh, but now you go to Indianapolis, the place is nothing but grandstands. I mean, it feels like mm -hmm. you're driving down a tunnel. Because <laughs> it, and that's how, many, I mean, the place is going to be packed with people. But, uh, you know, you've got a very flat, in four different corners around that racetrack with long, long straightaway. So from a driver uh, standpoint, it's very much different from Daytona, but it's still just an awesome sight to see. That's going to be a lot of fun. By the way, they're available in large and extra large, but I need to point out that extra large is becoming limited. Uh, a couple other questions about the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I mean, that's got to be one heck of a thrill to have been one of the first few cars out there. Well, you know, it's, it's an opportunity that not too many race car drivers uh, get to do. I mean, especially when it when it's something that's making history with the mm -hmm. stock cars. Uh, you know, it's really no, never been anything but an IndyCar on, on that racetrack.
for so many years, and, and now you know we're getting to make history uh, with with driving the first stock cars uh, on the track. And, and I mean, the people are so pumped up about it, and so are the drivers and, oh, and yeah. the teams and stuff. I mean, they're going all out for that race, and it, it's going to be a, a lot of fun. And, and the person that wins that first race uh, is going to go down in the record books also. There's a terminology like gasoline alley. I mean, I grew up in Indianapolis. They call it gasoline alley, but they had not run true gasoline at Indianapolis <laughs> since 1961. Until, until we got you, there. Yeah, until you guys <laughs> cranked up the starters on the engines of these Winston Cup cars back last year, that's the first time they'd seen gasoline and gasoline yeah, they run for menthanol, a long time. Menthanol, yeah. and, uh, you know, you don't see it when it burns, and uh, yeah. it, it makes a lot of horsepower, but, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, the gasoline, that, that is funny. I guess I hadn't even thought about that a whole lot until you just said that, but uh, it's, I mean, all the things that are different, like, they don't drive the Indy cars in and out of the garage area. You know, here we were firing oh, yeah, them up, true. backing out of the back garage and, and driving out <laughs> on the racetrack. And nobody knew how to take that. And, and, you know, it was different for them, but we're like, hey, this, you know, what's That's your what deal? That's what you do. Yeah. And one other question. They call it the brickyard for a reason. I mean, years ago, that entire surface was paved with nothing but brick. I've got a, I've got one of the original bricks. That's dated. pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's neat. Now, the, the start-finish line is still... It still has still, a strip of brick, and that's where my question leads us. When you hit that baby at about 150, 160, 70 miles an hour, do you feel it? Is it like a rumble strip, or do you, is yeah, it so fast you don't even know? I mean, it? you feel a little bump, but, uh, you know, I mean, I mean really, you'll, you can hear the cars hit. I mean, it's really, you know, when the cars go by, you can kind of hear them hit. It's like a ripple strip hitting uh -huh. that. But uh, as far as us feeling it, when we're going in the straight line, those, the Winston Cup cars are built for, for big bumps and big mm -hmm. dips. I mean, the cars have a lot, <laughs> lot of travel, and they're very heavy cars, so if it's something that minor, we really don't notice them too much. Well, we're going to continue to make our Brickyard inaugural hat and T-shirt set available to you. Large and extra large. Extra large is limited. Item number is A20671, all commemorating from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the inaugural running of the Brickyard 400. This Thursday, travel with QVC to the Green Hills of Ireland in our 24-hour St. Patrick's Day celebration. At approximately 9 a.m. Eastern, Jane Rudolph Tracy will present the Connemara Marble Rosary Beads. This rosary has been so popular that it sold out quickly the only two times it was offered. And it's easy to see why. Each bead is handmade of genuine Connemara marble found exclusively in the ageless Connemara Mountains of Western Ireland. It measures approximately 24 inches long and is QVC priced at $26. Place your order early for item H15351. And be sure to watch for other Irish imports in our St. Patrick's Day celebration all day Thursday on QVC. This has been a fun program. If you're just tuning in, hello there. My name is Dan Hughes, your host for another edition of For Race Fans Only. Our guest tonight is Jeff Gordon, 1993 Max Race Card Rookie of the Year. And we've had a lot of fun stuff coming your way. By the way, we'll do a, a review at the end of the program. Every single time that we're on the air, whether it be with Dale Earnhardt or Harry Gant, uh, Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Ernie Irvin, when we offer flags on the air, they tend to sell out. <laughs> it's something you like to go that extra yard, man. This is the biggest flag that we've ever offered. Yours is a little bigger than the other guys. Most of them that we get on the air are done in a two foot by three foot size. Yours is two and a half feet by three and a half feet, and it kind of takes that much room to get that great big DuPont car on the front of it. This a lot is of really colors nice to add in there. Yeah, this is really well done. Now it's a little bit different. It's all 100% nylon, but it's a different nylon material than usual. And many times that nylon is a uh, a plastic like look. This is more of a uh, material that you might expect backpacks to be created from. It's the same type of a Kendora type styling. It's $29.25. The item number is at $46.45, and this is the first time we've offered it on the year. We started off our program at 10 p.m. out here on the East Coast. That would have been 7 p.m. out on the West. With 1,000 of them in our inventory, we are now down to about half of that particular uh, quantity. They have metal grommets, so you can hang them up just like a flag. Run them right up the, the flagpole on Sunday afternoons when the guys are racing. And I like the idea of using it as a wall hanging or on a right. door, kind of giving an opportunity for the youngsters to get I've involved in racing, too. I've seen for so many things. You know, you talk about people sending you pictures of all the things that they have. And, yep. man, I see these flying in more people's bedrooms than <laughs> in any place. But uh, they're, they're built like this because we want them to be flying for a long, long mm -hmm. time. And, uh, you know, they are built very well. 
Now you're racing with with the owner of, uh, of really three different teams, right? And is that a benefit to you to have teammates like Terry Labonte and also Kenny, Kenny Schrader? Schrader? Oh, it, it definitely can be, and uh, we try to use it to, to benefit. I mean, we can learn so much more from those two teams uh, if we use all th three, you know, and er everybody mm -hmm. gets their heads together and works. And it comes in handy on the racetrack sometimes, too, you know. Uh, uh, you can, we have a radio contact with, with all the teams, and, and we can work together on the racetrack under a caution we can talk about certain things but off the racetrack you know they've given me that experience that, that I don't have and I can't get it just overnight so you know I can go to Kenny Schrader or go to Terry Labonte who's won a Winston Cup championship yeah. and, and, and say you know hey my car is doing this or, or this is happening what you know what can you do and so working with the driver it's definitely been helpful but also for you know Ray my crew chief who uh, you know he, he's new to Winston Cup also so it, it's nice for him to work uh, with the other two teams. So with, with Rick Hendrick being the owner, I mean, he keeps that, that line of communication open at all times. Like, Kenny had a great year as far as winning pole positions. Right, right. Was that information trickled down to you for your your hopes and, and aspirations of getting more pole positions yourself? Oh, definitely. And, and, and then, you know, we had we had uh, some, some top ten finishes, you know, there in a row, and, and they would come to us for that. And we always uh -huh. go back and forth. You know, sometimes we have a good setup at a racetrack, that we share that information. Sometimes they have a better setup. They share that information with us, and, and we build all of our own race cars, do all mm -hmm. our own bodies, engines. I mean, basically everything is done in-house at, at Hendrick Motorsports. So it, it's you know, it, it's a it's a great organization with a lot of great people. It makes a difference. This year, qualifying has become more important than ever before. Oh, I mean, we're talking man. about big big names in racing that are going home without getting on the track because they're not qualifying right does that put more pressure on you as a driver to take it to the edge every time you qualify definitely it puts more pressure on everybody to make more horsepower to have the cars working better but it, i think what it's doing is it's taking us all to a new level for qualifying everybody's mm -hmm. having to you know try a lot harder and work and focus a lot more every once in a while you'll see some of these guys that, that just qualify midfield to the back but when the race comes boom they're right there they're fast now You've got to have a setup for qualifying, a setup for the race. So, you know, you can't be lacking or you're going to go home. And it's happened. I mean, it's happened with big, big names already. Let's do this. We're going to continue to make the flag available. The item number again is F4655. It's the 1994 edition of $29.25. Let's take a little break from our race fans only show. Let's find out what's coming up tomorrow. We have got a big, big day planned here at QVC. Tomorrow, March 17th, is St. Patrick's Day. And we can't let an event like that go by without a 24-hour celebration. Let's step backstage to another area of our broadcasting facilities where Judy Kroll is standing by. Judy, what do you have coming up for St. Patrick's Day? Hey, thanks, Dan. Well, of course, we're going to kick it off in 10 minutes with our Today's Special Value. And uh, we're going to do so with a cape. And, of course, Matt Doolin is going to be here with us as well to talk about the way that it's made and the fabulous design. The beauty of it is that it comes in three different colors. And we'll talk about each and every one of them with our fabulous models here to help show you them. They're called the Irish Plaid Scarf Capes with the Coordinating Ceramic Pin. And it's the ceramic brooch. It's A18407. Your choice is the tan background with the mauve and the slate blue accents and then the coordinating blue scarf. There's also one that's a magenta background, and that's the one that Deb has on here with the coordinating magenta solid scarf. And there are tams that match these two. And then the traditional green with navy blue and black and red accents with the solid green scarf. Boyne Valley Weavers is synonymous with quality and beautiful woolen items, including the cape. We also have a couple of sweaters that are coming up. I'll be spending the next two hours with you. And tomorrow when you get up in the morning, don't forget to wear your lucky green. Dan? Thanks, Judy, and I'll be dressed in green. I'll be on the air at 12 noon until 3 o'clock in the afternoon. We've got a lot of great things in store. It's great to be able to say hi, Judy. Let's go back to what we call our fan packs, and this gives people an opportunity to really show their support for you as a race car driver. In this fan pack, what we have are three different pieces, one of which is not going to cooperate, so I'll just hold it up. In the set, you've got Jeff Gordon's number one fan, <laughs> which I figure if you've got more than one of those, somebody's got to be, <laughs> you know, the number two or the number three fan. But this is number one Jeff Gordon fan. They're we, all number one. They're all number one. <laughs> I like that. We also have the car mug, which features a little 164th scale version of your Chevy. And then there is a plastic plate above that. I'm trying to get the reflection. That is completely self-contained. So when you pour your favorite beverage in there, you're not, you know, drowning the carburetor. Everything <laughs> works out just fine. And then what a lot of people have been saying they've been desperately wanting is right here. 
This is the Jeff Gordon 1994 calendar. As you open it up, it goes back to a very important date. That's 1993 at Daytona with your win of one of the Gatorade Twin 125 qualifiers. Yeah, that was a big day. They've had, I mean, you talk about the colors. Now, this has got to be the most colorful calendar I've ever seen. I mean, that, it's got all the colors of, of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, probably some, some extras even added in there. <laughs> in this, to give you an example, it, let's take a, recognize this face, Chris Economaki, <laughs> and then some of the other big names in the sport. This is uh, Larry Belusky. Belusky. Right? He's a VP of operations at Daytona. And, I mean, these guys are pretty darn happy to see you in victory lane. Man. <laughs> That's a good feeling. Of course, a big old jug of Gatorade right there. What the fan is going to enjoy is that it's not just a calendar. It has what you would want on a racing calendar. It has all the race dates highlighted. And that's not just for Winston Cup racing, it's also Bush Grand National. So you can go ahead and make sure that you're catching up on your favorite broadcast. And it tells a lot of information about your team. It starts with Ray and some of the other names that are involved as well. It gives an opportunity for them to have a, a little taste of the limelight as well. They really put their heads together when they did this calendar. I mean, you know, there's a lot of information that you can get out of this calendar. And I mean, it's just, I mean, 100% on racing and, and the DuPont mm -hmm. team and, and, uh, and myself. Well, as we flip through this, it gives you some great color photos of Jeff and those people that he surrounds himself with. And as we continue on here, Jeff, let me flip to the very back. <laughs> you knew this was coming. Uh, you announced at Daytona that things had changed a little bit in your personal life. Right. Well, uh, you know, I announced my, my engagement to be married. And, uh, yeah, that's her right there. Uh, there is Brooke. <laughs> at that time, nobody knew what was going on. Uh, ne neither did I. You, I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, at that point, I think it was that day uh, of that Win 25 that, that uh, I asked her to, to go out with me when we got back to Charlotte. And uh, who would have thought, you know, all these wonderful things are happening to me, and, and that's definitely one of them. She's a, she's a great girl, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to her being a major part of my life. Yeah, is it possible for this guy's life to get any better? <laughs> <laughs> it is so, with her. Yeah, Brooke Seeley is your fiance, and uh, you've announced a, a November wedding. Right. Sometime in November. Uh, she was the reigning Miss Winston for 1993. Right, and uh, she, she's no longer Miss Winston, but she enjoyed it very much. And, uh, and hey, if it wasn't for that, we would have never met. Like, uh, we were talking to Humpy Wheeler, if anybody knows yep. Humpy Wheeler uh, with Charlotte Motor Speedway. He, he told Brooke and myself the other day that behind every great race car driver there's a, a great woman so uh, we're gonna we're gonna make that happen gotta show you a picture this is an example of what you're seeing a lot with with Jeff Gordon you're seeing a smile on his face um, we have a few more moments before we wrap up the show but let me say something a little early I have an opportunity and it's, it's the coolest thing in my life is to be able to sit on a chair next to guys like yourself but for someone who's had the success that you've already had you are incredibly down to earth I mean you are the type of guy that, that you just love to have over for dinner and, and sit down and talk racing with, and that's what our show has been all about. It, it's a real opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. And I'll tell you what, if you're not a Jeff Gordon fan already, hopefully tonight has convinced you that you should be, because this is a, a guy who is definitely one in a million. Let's go over to our lucky number machine. We're going to select for you a brand new four-digit lucky number, and we'll come back. We'll be wrapping up our show in just a bit. A new four-digit lucky number is drawn every hour on the QVC Cable Shopping Channel. Every time that number matches either the first four digits or the last four digits of your QVC membership number, and you notify us by phone that you have a match before the next lucky number is drawn, your QVC account will be credited with 10 shopper dollars, and you will also be automatically entered in all five of the next day's $1,000 QVC shopping spree drawings. If you don't already have a membership number, get yours now. It's completely free, no purchase necessary, and there's absolutely no obligation. Just call toll-free 1-800-345-1515 and a QVC membership number will be assigned to you on the phone. Current lucky number is 3355. You are so organized. You really are. That is just... <laughs> 3355 is the current QVC lucky number. Our uh, item number for our fan pack is F4632. In the fan pack, you're going to get the updated 1994 calendar. The photographer is Don Grassman, who just did a great, great job. It's going to capture the likeness of Jeff, the entire team. Also, a new member of the team back here <laughs> with, with Brooke being your fiance. And it's just a great opportunity to also have up-to-date 
listings of when those races are going to be run. That way you can pop a tape in the VCR or sit by and, and enjoy your favorite program. You're going to get the mug along with it. You get the number one fan pin as well. All of it for $22.25. Jeff, let's do this. Let's go back. Let's take a look at everything that we still got available in the hour. Two hours went by rather quick, didn't it? It went by real quick. I uh, told you it would. Yeah, you did. You told me that. <laughs> Let's start off with that limited edition autograph lithograph at a price of $125. That's item number C13298. 125 is going to bring you a new look signed by Jeff Gordon. Great price. Also still available are those engineered shirts. They are literally silkscreened before they're manufactured, before they're all put together. Reason for it is that they are such bright colors and so much of it. What you need is that print process first. The $29.25 in your favorite choice of drivers. Racing caps are available as well. Those are $17.75. Item number is A20436. And for those of you who keep sending me letters saying get diecast stuff on the air, hopefully this will appease you. This is your choice of the Jeff Gordon diecast banks. We thought you might prefer something that's a little different than just the normal look of the Chevy Lumina. There's our $41.50 each. Still available, and I'm eating my words on this, guys. I thought for sure these would be gone. We just have a few dozen of the Jeff Gordon uh, blow-up card. And we have just a few also of the Harry Gant blow-up card. Keep in mind that Harry is retiring at the end of this year. When these cards are gone, they're gone. These are the actual cards from the Action Pack series just blown up into a bigger format. From Simpson Racing Products down in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Jeff Gordon one half scale Simpson helmet. This is a limited edition and a helmet that you have not seen. It was a national introduction. What makes it so different is that it has that Rookie of the Year banner across the visor. We have them on the air for $52. C13903. The choice of the 1994 NASCAR Driver Varsity Jackets. Those are $100. Item number here is A20594. And still available, that Sam Bass lithograph that has been reproduced onto a, a decorative clock at a price of $75 at C13296. Again, Sam Bass never before had created the likeness of a rookie driver in his rookie year until he did that for Jeff Gordon last season. $75 is the price. The choice of the racing moon mugs. You put them in the freezer, they freeze overnight. You pour in your favorite beverage, I'll say that right, beverage. It keeps it cool for up to two hours at room temperature and an hour at 100 degrees, $17.75. Our one time only, the price is almost gone on these. The Jeff Gordon Rookie of the Year signed plaque. That is autographed by Jeff, $52.96, C13300. The NASCAR driver watches at $66.75, item number C, uh, pardon me, J24050. Also still available, we have that full set of the 1994 Action Pack. That's very limited, by the way. These folks at Action Pack don't sell full sets to anybody in the country except for QVC. We are now down to a handful of these remaining. When they're gone, they're gone. You're going to get the uncut card sheet that is a Challenger and Champions design that's going to be Jeff Gordon and also Dale Earnhardt together. You also get two prototype cards, all for $63.64. One of the coolest collectibles is right here at $120. It's a Jeff Gordon race car sign. You put it right on the wall with the screws that are included. It's C13360. I think you're really going to like the quality. Almost sold out of our Brickyard 400 inaugural hat and t-shirt set for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Extra large has sold out. We are down to large only at $31. Item number is A20671. Still available is F4655, the 1994 Jeff Gordon flag. $29.25, close to $500 have been ordered. And still available, and I, again, I can't believe we have these. We have the signed Framus. That's going to be the, the big signed artboard. And then we also have a prototype card, which is the 1993 prototype card. That was before that Rookie of the Year title was won. We only have about 75 of these remaining. They should sell out by the end of the program. See, one, two, five, four, seven. The choice of the 1994 NASCAR driver leather jackets. These are phenomenally well made. They are all leather construction. $325. Choice of drivers, we have Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. And we wrap up with the Jeff Gordon fan pack at $22.25. Item number is F4632, giving you the calendar with all the up-to-date schedules for NASCAR racing. Also giving you the pin and the mug. Those are available for $22.25. Pardon me, we have a couple more items. The Looney Tune t-shirts, $16.08. They are A19974. And that's it. Again, I want to thank Jeff Gordon for being on the air. A real pleasure. Hey, thank Very you. much a pleasure. My pleasure. We have another edition of For Race Fans Only coming up next month. And we've got some incredibly important things coming up. 
that would be part of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tradition of the running of the 500. I'll tell you more about that next time we get together. Until then, have a great evening. Our thanks to Jeff Gordon, the great people at DuPont. We'll be back in just a bit as we kick off St. Patrick's Day right here at QVC. an occasion to wear beautiful faux pearl jewelry. You can't go wrong with the classic affordable designs in our fashion pearl boutique. Two hours this Monday. No. Okay.